you know what? Just what forget. We can, always, we can always cut some of that off the front end, but I can't go back and record it if I didn't record it. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. We're going to get kicked off here, but I just want to make sure that we're getting um, – all right, everyone, can you see the, just want to make sure you can see, the webcams are cool and hopefully you can see that, but I for sure want to make sure you can see the PowerPoint. You should see how to earn double digit returns, 10 extra retirement savings. Give me a thumbs up or something in the question box. I want you to find where the question box is anyway, because we're going to give you a chance to ask questions uh, while we're on the workshop today. So, yep, yep, yep. All right. And let me move this over here. All right, so I'll have to watch the questions and see if we can get it, um, be able to see it as we move forward in this. But um, welcome everyone. And we're running the recording, but we'll go back. We're gonna try to, if this all works out, we're gonna try to offer a replay for you guys as well. And uh, let's <clears throat> all right. Well, welcome everyone. This is JP Maroney. I've got Nick from Fortune DNA, a good friend of mine, also an advisor to us and some of our clients. Um, we've been intended to do this for a while, and it's been man, I guess since maybe 2000, early 2015, since I did a public webinar and talked a little bit about uh, digital marketing arbitrage and what Harbor City Capital was doing. And from time to time, people see me at a conference or something and they're like, man, what's going on? How, how are things going? And, and uh, the fact is we've had our head down working. So we've got big opportunity ahead of us and uh, a, a lot of moving parts. And so we've been busy building the company and not out doing a lot of public speaking and, and webinars. But uh, we just couldn't ignore it. Nick and I were talking about a uh, the money show. So Harbor City is going to be joining Fidelity and TD uh, Ameritrade and some other companies in sponsoring the money show coming up here in Orlando. And Nick and I were going over some of the facts and statistics surrounding the current market and the stat status of the market in terms of of the, the stock market and then other investment opportunities and things are looking pretty crazy out there. And this year is expected to be um, a, a shell shocker for a lot of people. And, and as you're going to see in this workshop, we've already started to see some of that. Uh, we kind of got a little taste of it in August of last year. And then, you know, investors had obviously plenty of challenges facing them in 2015, but 2016 is going to be very, very interesting. But we're going to talk about investment returns, and we're going to talk about what you can do to prepare for the coming challenges that we're going to see in the marketplace. And really what that comes down to is why would you care? Why would you want to grow your money? Well, ultimately, you've got an end game that you're trying to achieve. So I'm assuming that you've got a number in your head that you figured out that you believe you need that amount of money in order to retire. The fact is, is that most people are unprepared financially for retirement, as you'll see in some of our statistics. And so I want to jump in and talk about where things are today. We're going to talk about where you're going, and we're going to talk about how you're going to get there and how we're going to be able to help you get there. We are going to reveal, literally, the growth market of the next decade. Um, the opportunity of the next decade that you're going to want to pay attention to. If you're looking to grow your investment, grow your retirement savings, grow your nest egg, if you're looking to create the kind of income that you need to be able to retire financially free, and what that means is the ability to live off of your investments without worrying about having to work to pay your expenses, then you're going to want to pay attention to what we have to share in terms of this amazing opportunity that we've put our own money into for the last little over two years now and capitalized on and had a few insiders and folks been making money off of it along with us, but we're opening up the doors and to a few people and showing them exactly what we're doing and where we're headed with this. So let's get started. This is obviously how to double digit, earn double digit returns and 10 extra retirement savings in record time. A lot of folks would like to do that. Uh, a lot of folks would like to be earning single digit returns after last year. So our promise for this workshop is that you're going to learn how to take control 
of your own investments. You're going to learn how to invest safely with confidence, how to earn double digit returns while others are sucking wind on single digit returns at best, and some of them not even that good, without getting ripped off by gurus and experts and brokers and scammers and people out there. If you have paid much attention or you know, gone to seminars or read the books, there are a lot of opinions out there. But what it really comes down to is track record. Where are the results happening? And we're going to show you a market where the results are happening and how you can tap into that as well. So here's a reality check as we get started. This was back in August of 2015, last year, $2.1 trillion erased from the U.S. stocks in six days. And this article is in CNN Money. And, and if you look at it, it's kind of interesting. It says, the S&P 500, the biggest barometer for the biggest U.S. companies, has lost trillions of market value in the last six-day sell-off through Tuesday, according to S&P Dow Jones indexes, indices. Now, look at this. To put these losses into perspective, that's roughly equal to the combined market value of Apple, Google, Berkshire Hathaway, ExxonMobil, Facebook, Walmart, and Century Fox Century 21, uh, or 21st Century Fox. That means the combined value of those companies, just so you can kind of put it into perspective and understand the scope of it, was whew, wiped out in six days. So people say, well, that was 2015. Things are coming back, right? Well, not really. This is same, same uh, publication, CNN Money, uh, January 12th, 2016. One trillion dollars erased from stock so far in 2016. One trillion. Again, in this particular case, the combined value of Google, Facebook, Intel, Netflix, and Yahoo combined, poof, wiped out. So imagine these solid companies, these Facebook, Google, these companies, growth companies, Walmart, established companies, and imagine their combined value, boom, wiped out first 12 days of the year. The fact is, is that if you listen to the people who know what they're talking about, as they say, where I'm from in Texas, you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, it's it's going to get worse. It's it's going to increase. But you look at, at, at what people are saying in terms, we talk about double digit returns. This is uh, someone in Financial Post saying, calculating investment returns, actuarially speaking, 6% is a good rule of thumb. We're going to show you in just a few minutes that if you earn 6% on your money, you're actually going to go backward. So 6% is not a good rule of thumb. Look at where CDs are at right now. Imagine, and some of you may have your money in this, you've got your money in there. These are not monthly rates. These are annual rates of return. People say, well, I'm looking for something safe, somewhere safe to put my money. Let me ex express something to you. You can put your money in something safe, but if you are not outpacing fees and inflation, you are actually losing money, what they call going broke slowly or safely. So it's possible to actually make money on paper and lose money in reality and go backward. Um, median 401k balances down to $23,000. Uh, it, it's insane. Um, we're going to talk about some of the other things. Retirement savers, this goes back to 08. Retirement savers lost $2 trillion in the stock market in 08. And this is not like wackos standing on a bridge saying, oh, you know, the sky is falling, chicken little, you know, run, run, run. The fact is, is that history repeats itself. And we're going to show you a verifiable statistical fact about history repeating itself that you're going to want to pay attention to. Two trillion wiped out of retirement funds. This is real people. I know, in fact, when I look at the names of some of the folks that joined us on this workshop, there are real people on this workshop right now that within the last 10 years, you've lost anywhere from 100000 to several million dollars in value in real money that was in the bank or in assets that disappeared. We know, I know some of you. So the, the fact is, is that real people, these are news articles and facts and statistics, and it's easy to forget that this is real Bobs and Marys and Janes who 
worked their whole life, built a business or worked in a career or a profession and stopped money away and invested in the in mutual funds or put money in a 401k that was ultimately tied to some kind of funds and tied to equities, only to see those things completely wiped out and sit there without any control whatsoever over the outcome and watch their savings, their nest egg, erode. I love this article. Don't worry about your retirement savings. These, every one of these, these articles of these people say, oh, no, no, no. Financial planners trying to convince their clients. It's okay. No, 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 really. It's okay. Ask them where their money is. Ask them, those same people, what you find out is most of the guys that are out there touting this stuff don't have their money in that stuff. And many of them hardly have any retirement savings at all themselves. So anytime you start to, to uh, get advice from somebody, ask them where they're investing their money. Where are they getting their returns? Um, failing health could drain your retirement savings. Obviously, baby boomers have this to uh, concern and ultimately anyone coming up. The S&P 500 has returned about 9% a year over the long run, but few years see returns even close to that. Since 1871, the index has risen or fallen more than 20 percent in one out of every three years. Less than one out of every five years sees a gain of between one and nine percent. So if we had a crystal ball and you could time this, then you could figure out a way, way to make money. But the problem is, is that the market doesn't give you advance notice. It doesn't say, you know what, if you buy this stock for a hundred dollars, you can sell it for 125, 150, 200 dollars guaranteed. There are no guarantees, whether you're in the stock market or you're in the real estate, there are no guarantees in those investments. Um, and we're, <laughs> I love this slide. I always have to put the slide in there. You can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. Things are still crazy out there. But a lot of people say, um, you know, where, where are we at now and and where are we going to be what's coming for this year because people it first started out as sort of the fringe radicals saying it's coming it's coming it's coming well now you see major hedge fund managers and mutual fund people and even financial authors and experts all now starting to say it's coming this year it's coming investors have a 75 percent chance that the market will correct in the first six months of 2016 and a 90% chance the market will correct in the first nine months of the year. So that, that's a fact. It's going to correct. Now, how much it corrects and how much it impacts you is pretty interesting. Look at this fact. This is statistical fact, unavoidable, undeniable. The stock market has averaged a correction of 33.8% every eight years since 1946. Is that a trend? Is that a pattern? Yes, it's a pattern. Here's the really scary part. The last correction was in 2008. And, you know, as I said, people say, well, you, have, you, you know, you ain't seen nothing yet. The fact is, is that as bad as all that mortgage-backed securities stuff was, as bad as all of that was, the perfect storm that's brewing right now, the perfect storm that's brewing right now is destined to wipe out completely wipe out or as much as 50% wipe out people's wealth and savings and investments. Social Security will run a $69 billion cash flow deficit this year. That's the good news. Every year after that, the shortfall will worsen. Altogether, Social Security is facing future shortfalls worth more than $24.9 trillion. And people say, Oh, well, you know, I can always fall back on Social Security. Right. That's just tell that to the people that thought they could fall back on their pension funds that now loan no longer exist. Tell that to people who said they could fall back on the value of their home that they had invested their money in for the last 25 or 30 years. And that value no longer exists. And they had to sell it in a short sale because they were upside down. Tell that to people who've lost their money. You can't sit around hoping and waiting that Social Security is going to bail you out. Some people think that you can't believe what's in the news. And I agree. When you look at it, you know, it's an emotional game. And, and some reporter might say one thing and another reporter might say another thing. So 
let's set aside all those articles, set aside all that news, set aside all that information, and let's look at some of the facts. The facts are that according to a study by Harvard professor David Weiss and two colleagues, 46.1% of Americans die with less than $10,000 in assets. According to Convergex Group, only 58% of us are even saving for retirement in the first place. Of that group, 60% have less than 25% put away. A full 30% have less than $1,000. Any of those numbers are not going to get you where you want to go. I guarantee you. Approximately 4 in 10 baby boomers have nothing saved for retirement. 36% of boomers plan to rely on Social Security as their primary source of income. We just showed you it's very likely not going to be there for you. 24% of U.S. workers admit that they have postponed their retirement, um, planned retirement age at least once during the past year. People keep going, well, I guess we're going to keep working. That's the only solution. We're just going to keep working. We're just going to Try to make it. Try to figure out how to make it. So the 100 largest public pension funds alone have $1.2 trillion of unfunded liabilities, according to actuarial firm um, Mil Milliman. Let me explain what that means. They promise to pay and they don't have the money. They promise to pay and they don't have the money. They're not going to have the money. You, you see these big massive collapses like Enron and things like that where people completely lost their retirement savings. We're talking 100 largest pension funds, $1.2 trillion in unfunded liabilities. 90% of the country's employees' 401k plans are watched over by people who, quote, need no special qualifications and no investing expertise or experience. You have put your money, if you've got money in a 401k, IRA, qualified plan of some kind, you've got, you've put your money into the hands of other people. And I call it hope investing because you put the money in there and you hope it works out. You hope you make money. While many managers hire brokers to suggest funds, brokers are not legally required to pick funds with low fees. And I want to bring Nick up here in just a second with low fees. So 401k plan managers who sign off on pricey funds could cost their workers tens of thousands of dollars over the long haul. Nick, I want to talk a little bit about this for just a second because you do rollovers. And number one, we'll get you to explain what that means here in just a little while. But you help people get their money out of the grubby paws of fund managers and stuff and take control of that wealth so they can invest it where they see fit and be able to, they can go back into those things, but I want you to talk about that. But I want you to talk a little bit about fees and the things that are plaguing folks with money in these 401ks and other types of qualified plans. Well, I think the, the number one thing that your viewers should know is that, uh, Although we help people facilitate rollovers, we don't we don't pick investments. We don't do investments. Uh, we don't get paid to do investments. So whether somebody goes into stocks or bonds or mutual funds, uh, real estate, uh, oil and gas, any, anything out there, I we have two major rules here. You know, JP. Number one is that people don't lose money, right? Uh, number two is that when they do make their gains that it's done in a tax advantaged way so they get to keep a majority of their return of their investment. Um, what One of the things that we've done is we've been really curious as uh, because we have you know some 40,000 uh, clients out there and uh, you know they're actively engaging us calling our office uh, more so now than ever uh, sending us emails saying look, what should I do? And they're hearing a lot of information about fees. And so we did an independent investigation on our own, uh, got our clients to actually send in their 401k statements and talk to business owners that actually uh, created or facilitate their own 401k plans to break down their fees. And the average amount of fees 
that we saw just in our clients was about 15 uh, different fees that are going on in our clients um, 401ks and retirement plans and then we found out that they're doing really well because the national average is 17 fees that the average person across the country has 17 fees uh, associated with their um, retirement accounts and one of the things that we found out is that uh, legally the Department of Labor has said that when audited 75 percent of all 401k plans are illegal because the amount of fees that are char being charged to them exceed um, the, the rules and the laws for what retirement accounts should have. And that's pretty big. So if they get away with it, they get away with it. But when they're audited, 75% of the ones that are audited um, don't meet, uh, don't cut the mustard. Uh, a lot of people out there don't understand that um, what we do here uh, and what your people that are watching this can do is that they can take a qualified plan. They can be in a 401k, an IRA, a SEP, a simple, some other kind of qualified plan and without penalty with zero tax they can roll out of that plan into a, a program which they control without all those fees without paying money under management without paying brokers expenses without paying trade fees they can roll that money into a place save all those fees have full control of their investments and not only go into all the conventional investments that they're that they are in right now but also go into other investments that the broker would never allow them to do because they're not commissionable to them, such as real estate, such as oil and gas, such as alternative investments. Uh, you know, Warren Buffett and Carl Icahn said, you know, alternative investments are the way of the future. They're the investment of the future. So it's important to take notice of that, and a lot of them are looking uh, and getting into alternative investments, uh, things you know things where people can control their own destiny destiny is important um, but yeah I mean out of uh, 8400 uh, 401k plans out there just just to give you an idea you know 401ks are primarily invested in a mutual fund and you know why they're invested in that is because they're conservative they're very safe but most people don't know that out of the 8400 total 401k programs out there that 96% of the 401k plans out there didn't even beat the market. So that means that you're in this, you're in a conservative plan, and people are conserving themselves out of a rate of return. And in most of those plans, they didn't even tie inflation. So it's like what you said, they're going broke safely. They, they you need to be able to get 6% on your money tax-free or 9% on your money tax deferred in order to tie inflation. Uh, if you're not tying inflation, then you've put your money into a position where uh, it will lose money, that the inflation will eat it up, eventually eat up your retirement account. So that's important to know. We'll have you come back in a few minutes and we'll talk a little bit about what, you know, how that really works and what people can do with that money. Um, Interesting stuff here. And again, we talk about the experts having having supposedly they're the ones with the education, with the information. Fortune magazine published an article titled 10 Stocks to Last a Decade in August 2000. By December of 2012, the portfolio had lost 74%, 0.3% of its value, according to analyst Barry Ritzholtz. 84% um, of active managed U.S. stock funds underperformed. That's what you were just saying a few minutes ago. Um, according to The Economist, over the last 10 years, hedge fund managers have underperformed not just the stock market, but inflation as well. Kiplinger's top rated funds are perceived to earn only 3% this year in 2016. 57% of major bond funds in the U.S. are invested in China. We all see what's going on there and cannot exit their fund for another three years. I love what Warren Buffett said about uh, financial professionals. He said, there are a few investment managers, of course, who are very good, though in the short term, it's difficult to determine whether a great record is due to luck or talent. Buffett wrote, most advisors, however, are far better at generating high fees than they are at generating high returns. In truth, their core competence is salesmanship, not investing, unfortunately. 
So uh, some of the things you were talking about with fees, here's another one. The average couple will pay $155,000 in 401k fees over their careers, according to Demos, rec um, reducing an average account balance from $510,000 to $355,000. It's like compounding in reverse. It erodes and erodes and erodes and erodes. Um, you mentioned, did, I don't know if you mentioned this or not, uh, the 2016, the, the uh, uh, net investment income tax. Can you, did you, I, I may have missed it a second ago, but can you talk about that briefly? I didn't mention it, but we're very aware of it. So if you now have, if you now have over a quarter million or you're invested uh, in, in financial vehicles doing over a quarter million dollars, uh, in, in the market anywhere, uh, you have a, a 3.8% net investment income tax plus a 0.9% Obama tax. So, you know, you've got an extra almost close to 5% that comes off off the top. So how critical that is. I mean, here you you had an article back there uh, where they're talking about, you know, investors should look forward to a 6% return. Well, if you take a 6% return, and then you subtract your 5% uh, tax off it. And remember, the Supreme Court says it's not a penalty, it's a tax. So you take 6%, you subtract 5%, you take out your broker's fee, your money and our management fees, your trade fees, your account cash balance fees, uh, your time value of money, inflation. You're losing money. Just You've put your money at, into the markets, and just by you putting your money at risk, You've allowed somebody to make money off your money, and you're losing money by doing so. And that's a crazy, and that's, you know, I, I see that you have that statistic about uh, inflation being 6% for the last 70 years. I, let's not get into, let's, let's not bump heads about what is being heard on the press because we talked about all that crazy stuff. Look what's really happening to your wallet. It's, it's not, you know, goods and services, inflation isn't 3%. If you look at the, the dollar, you know, the cost of gas, the cost of milk, the cost of living, uh, the cost of consumables and things like that. In some cases, it's well above 6%. So you, you're feeling it. You know how it affects you personally. You know that when you walk in there with a couple hundred dollars, you're walking out with a couple bags of groceries, and it hardly lasts you or your family a week. You, you, you need, you know, I have a saying, JP, you know, you can lie to everybody, uh, you know, and, and that's, that's your prerogative, but when you start lying to yourself, you got real problems. So you got to be honest with yourself what's going on, and uh, you know the truth will set you free. It'll allow you to do some things with your money that you won't get caught up in the short short run and uh, get a haircut on your investments. I mean that's important. Yep, absolutely. Well, I'm I'm gonna uh, jump ahead. There's obviously more and more statistics. Average mutual fund lost. Uh, investor lost 6.6% last year. You know, I, again, I, what I really want to make sure that we say is that so many people think, well, if I go in the stock market, I have a guaranteed return. If I go into real estate, I have a guaranteed return. If I go into some uh, particular type of investment, I have a guaranteed return. No, you don't. You don't have guaranteed returns because we've all seen people lose money or we've lost money in those same vehicles. So if you're going to put your money at risk, why not go make money? So when you look at... Um, hey, JP, yeah. can I say one? Sure. This is, uh, this is important. You know, when people talk about how conservative the stock market is, 84% 80, of all the stock companies that existed on the Dow 20 years ago do not exist today. And when the reason why they don't exist is because either they filed bankruptcy, they went under, or they had to merge with another company because they were losing so much money, they needed somebody to come in and save them and bail them out. So if you had money with those companies, you lost money. They're so conservative that almost over 8 out of 10 companies that existed 20 years ago don't exist today. So when people talk about conservative, that's not my idea of being conservative. Um, you people need to revisit what what they define as safe. 
and I agree with what you're saying. Look, it doesn't matter what you invest in, right? It doesn't matter if it's stocks or real estate, oil and gas, alternative investment, anything. It doesn't matter. You're going to put your money at risk. If you're going to put your money at risk, like you would in any investment, you need to make sure you're getting paid. If you're going to risk it, get paid for your risk. But putting a half a million dollars in a company that may not be around in the next 10 years so that you can make a 6% rate of return, lose money because you can't beat inflation, and take the risk that you're going to go through this market correction that is almost guaranteed in the next year. I, I'd like to point out too that you know markets correct in the first year of a, a you know a new president it goes down, but markets always bottom out statistically the second year of that presidency. So <laughs> it's like oh uh, well, it's bad. Oh well, just hang on. It's not that bad. It's getting worse. So it's just important to know some of those things so that you can make good decisions. Yeah, I think this is interesting. Insured Retirement Institute survey found that only 27% of baby boomers are confident they'll have enough money to last their retirement. And at the end of the day, that's really the question is, how much money do you need to retire? And what can you count on? What can you count on to earn during your retirement? And, and what kind of a lifestyle do you want? Do you want to be able to create? So that's the big question as we go through and talk about this other stuff is, how much do you really need for retirement? And, and how can you keep those what we call wealth busters from eroding that retirement nest egg before you even get a chance to get there? Things like hidden fees, things like unscrupulous professionals or just professionals that just can't figure out how to beat the market or make a, a decent rate of return. Scams that are out there, whether it's scams within inside okay traditional investments and there's plenty of that happening look at what happened in 08 or just scammers out there pitching hawking stuff or hawking information you see a lot of that on the internet these days a volatile market if you i'm going to i'm going to show you in just a few minutes if you look at the stock market it does like this right we're going to introduce you to a market that has done like this and isn't stopping so if you're going to go somewhere and put your money into something, put it into something that you can count on growth. You can count on the future of that particular market. And then, of course, what we talked about with minimal returns. It is a wealth buster because if you're earning less than the combined total of the taxes and the inflation and the fees and everything else, you're going backwards. So let's talk a little bit about some of these wealth builders and what you need to know to be successful in the market today. People feel very overwhelmed having so much information. And so here are the things that you need to know. Number one, you need to be able to find investments with good returns and low risk. Most of the time when you see an investment, if it has a, a low risk, then it's got a low return. If it has a, a high return, then it's got high risk. You want to try to find things that have a good return, a substantial or solid return, but also have a way to minimize your risk as much as possible. And one of those things is making sure that your investments are not tied to the volatility of the stock market, not tied to the volatility of individual stocks in some of these wonderful, great companies, but who keep up and down. If, if I had told you six months ago, that Apple was going to be at 92 and 93 cents or even under a hundred dollars a share. Most people would have laughed at me. But the fact is, is here we are. It was at 132 sometime last year, but it rode at 123, 124 all the way in through the end of the year and then <laughs> crashed after the first of the year. And and people say, well, how did that happen? Tim Cook got up and made announcements about they're doing good stuff and this is happening. The confidence is high. If your investments are tied to the market or tied to those stocks, then your nest egg is going to live through that. You have to try to live through that volatility. So find those investments with good returns, but with minimized risk. Find people and companies that you can trust. In other words, not get ripped off. And what that means is, do they know what they're talking about? And do they have a proven track record? If they do, and, and do they have other people that have been through this path with them and been successful? Number three, avoid information overload. I, I sometimes tell people that whether it's building a business or investing, there comes a time when you just got to cut off all of the information and say, 
Here's my strategy. I'm going to go down this path and I'm going to do this thing and sort of put blinders on and say, I'm not going to get distracted and taken away because every single day there's going to be somebody dogpiling on more information, more information saying it's good today. It's bad today. It's good today. Oh, no, China's down. Oh, now Japan's down. Oh, now Greece is wiped off the face of the earth and on and on and on. You have to be able to know where the information is coming from and what information is valuable to your future. How to survive and even thrive in a volatile market. It, the, the market I'm going to show you in just a few moments, the, the investment and strategy that I'm going to show you has a very interesting element to it. That even when times are, when times are going great and business is bustling, this market thrives. But when times are bad, historically, when the market has gone down, when there's been a recession, when there's been challenges, this market has still thrived from a different way. And I'm going to explain to you, it has to do with uh, uh, supply and demand, and I'm going to talk about that in just a few minutes so you can evaluate that as well. Number five, you need to know where to find money to invest. So a lot of people feel uh, handcuffed because they say, well, my money's in my 401k or my money's locked up in this particular account or situation and I can't get it out. We're going to show you before we get done and we're going to do a QA and a at the end. Nick will stick around, can answer some questions as well, is that your money is your money. It's time to reclaim your wealth. It's time to reclaim control of your financial destiny and take control of where you're headed with your money. All right. So how about some good news? This is the good part of the, the, the workshop. So the fact is, is that it's not all bad because if, if you go online, you'll see that there's companies doing business and selling stuff. You go into the stores, you go into the restaurants, you'll see that people are spending money and you go, well, if it's, if it's so good, how is it going to be so bad? I want to take you back to 08. And if, by the way, if you haven't seen um, the movie, The Big Short, you ought to go out and see that movie if it's still in a theater close to you. If not, grab it on DVD or online when it comes out. But we're seeing history repeat itself. One of my principles I've lived by for years, if you want to know what the future looks like, look at the past. That includes people. If you want to know what your future or the person's going to be look like, look at the past. How did they treat other people? That's what your future is going to be like. Well, if you want to know what the market's going to look like, what business is going to look like, Look at the past. And so there's there's bad news that we've shared, but there's also good news and there's opportunity for us. You want to figure out where is the opportunity? Where can I go? Where can I look? Where can I put my money that I'm going to be able to make some money? Now, before you groan and say, oh, my God, he didn't use that quote, because so many people have used this quote over the years that it is has become cliche. But the fact is that whether Wayne Gretzky really ever said this or not, this is actually how it works. If you're playing hockey, you're going to skate to where the puck is going. If you're shooting, uh, 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 doing uh, skeet shooting, you don't aim at the skeet. You lead, right? You're going, you need to discover where things are going so that you can be there whenever it happens. To put things a little more humorously, I don't know if you ever heard of Willie Sutton. He was a bank robber. He wrote a book about, or there was a book written about him. And someone asked him one time, said, Willie, so he called him Slick Willie. Uh, Willie, why do you rob banks? And he said, because that's where the money is. So you want to know where's the money? Where's the growth? Where's the opportunity? Where can I go now? And for the next, let's say, decade or longer, and know that there's going to be a continuous path of growth. So I want to look at some profit opportunities and growth for you by introducing you to some things that are going on in the digital space. Now, the fact that we're living this right now, you and I and Nick, all of us together, we're literally, uh, you attended a class, a workshop on the internet for which you signed up on a form on the internet. And if you want to get in touch with me, yeah, you can call me, but I can send you a link and you go to a form and on the internet and fill out that form and we can have a conversation. So we're experiencing digital world right now. But I want you to think about this. Mobile advertising is the key driver to growth around the world. Advertisers will spend 
advertisers will spend $64.25 billion worldwide on mobile in 2015, an increase of nearly 60% over 2014. That figure will reach $158.55 billion by 2018 when mobile ads will account for 22.3% of all advertising spending worldwide. I want you to think about this. Where's the money at? 38% of Fortune 500 companies' budget is allocated for online digital marketing. Here's another one. Ad revenue is up 36% or was up from, from 2011 to 2013. It's even bigger. Right now, the online advertising space is a $135 billion a year industry. A couple of years ago, for the first time ever, it surpassed TV advertising as the biggest spend. And you say, where's the money at? It's in the digital advertising space, but not how you might think. So give me a moment and we'll get to that. It's estimated that by 2016, online ad spending in the U.S. will have doubled since 2011, hitting 67, this is just in the U.S., $67.4 billion a year. That's 13.7% compound annual growth. Every year, every year, every year, every year, every year growing. So the average click-through rate for Facebook ads has jumped 275% since 2012. I love this. ROI on Facebook ads increased 152% between 2013, 2012 and 2013. Excuse me, it's backwards. Walmart is getting a marketing equivalent of a 1,000% higher ROI on Facebook and Twitter compared to other advertising spins. And in the fall, as of fall 2012, Google had over 1.2 million businesses advertising on its network. But I'm going to show you where this is really going. Online advertising spending topped 100 billion in 2012. It's now over 135 billion dollars. Basically, this is an industry. This is a, a, a business model. This is an opportunity that didn't even exist 20 years ago. And now it's dominating our world and it's dominating the opportunity to invest. You say, well, does that mean I need to invest in stocks that are tied to advertising? You could, but you're still dealing with the volatility of will will somebody wake up tomorrow and put out a report on that stock that it's not worth as much as it was yesterday. And all of a sudden it goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down. I'm going to show you how to capitalize on this trend, this opportunity, and earn double digit returns on your money without ever buying a stock, including without ever buying any kind of tech or advertising stock. Remember what I said a few minutes ago that online advertising, that there was a market that has continued to climb and grow? The stock market goes up, the stock market goes down. People are trying to time it. They're trying to figure out how can I make money in it? While that happens, the, stock market, the, the, the growth in the trend for online advertising just keeps on chugging up and up and up and up. Mobile advertising revenues jumped 110% to $7.1 billion, according to IAB report prepared by PricewaterhouseCoopers. That's the third year of triple-digit growth for the category, which includes multiple formats such as display search and so-called native ads. Let me tell you what. The future, think about it right now. I bet within, somewhere within your reach, unless you left it in your purse, somewhere within your reach is a mobile device. And you, you say, well, that's access to my phone. That's access to Facebook. That's access to my email. No, what it really is, is it's a way for advertisers to put ads in front of you. That's what mobile is. Facebook was so convinced and persuaded by that, that a few years ago, they completely shifted their conversation and said, we now consider ourselves a mobile company. Go where the money is. Willie Sutton, he knew what he's talking about. Go where the puck is. Where is the opportunity going to be? This is Facebook. And again, the numbers just continue to roll up. Just in 2014, it was $12.47 billion in display revenue. Here's U.S. print versus online ad spending. Now, in case you miss it in there, the, the black and the gray is print, newspaper and magazine spending. The red growing is online spending. 
So I, I would look around my office and try to find you a yellow pages so I could hold it up. But the fact is, I don't even have one. Most of us don't have them anymore. All those things that people made money with and spent money with in the past, that money is getting moved and has been moved over into the digital space. People are investing, again, Fortune 500 companies, 38% of their budgets devoted to online advertising spend. Go to where the money is. So when you think about investing and how to put your money into something, as I said earlier, ask your financial advisors where is their money and how much money are they making off of that money. Ask the people that are trying to run your 401k fund, where is their money and how much have they made over the last year, two years, three years, four years. It's time that we as human beings, that we as real people stand up and demand performance. Demand performance for the hard-earned money that you've put aside over the years. You have to demand performance. And that means that you need a better way of making money. I love this quote. It's one of my favorite quotes. But I refer to it on many different things over, over the course of a day or week. Buckminster Fuller says, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that since December, 13, uh, December of 2013, we have created a model that has made old model investing seem almost obsolete, and we did it by leveraging what I just showed you, this massive growth and spend in the digital space. People are forking over money. And there's a couple of reasons why it's happening. Number one, it's working. But number two, there's a there's sort of there's a push and there's a pull. The pull is that it's working for others and they st start to see it. So they go out and they begin to test and they try stuff and it starts to work potentially for them. The, the push side of it is that what they did in the past is no longer working. And let me tell you what, CEOs of companies are scared to death because if they don't continue to perform, if they don't continue to grow sales year over year over year, analysts begin to take them apart piece by piece and their stocks plummet. So companies are investing no matter what happens to the market, no matter if it's good or bad, recession or, or growth, bull or bear, it doesn't matter. Companies invest their dollars into the online space and they're pouring it in at, right now at $135 billion a year, expected to top $230 billion by the year 2018. Go where the money is. Find the shortest path to success. I'm going to show you in just a few minutes, and, and I don't know how many of you have figured out what it's going to take for you to retire. I don't know if you've, you've actually calculated that. We can go over some of that in a few minutes. But if you kind of ballpark figure, in fact, I saw a number the other day that the average, the average, now some people can make it on less than this. I don't know how. Some people absolutely need more. But the average is around $4,600, $4,600. Um, that that retire people reaching or nearing retirement say that they think they're going to need in retirement years per month to be able to survive. So forty five hundred. This was rounded up to five thousand dollars or sixty thousand dollars a year. Well, with the average investment, you would need massive money. You know, three four million dollars in a, in an account to be able to provide that kind of growth if you could even get a decent return. And as you've seen, everything we've shown you in this workshop. The challenge is getting a decent return and knowing that you can count on it for the long term. But if you could have a smaller amount of money stashed away in a nest egg and still earn the kind of money that you need to be able to retire and live like you want to live, well, then you would have yourself a shortcut. I'm often reminded, this thing on the screen reminded about Nathan Parkinson. Up into, If you remember the, what's on that screen, it's Mario, right? Super Mario or whatever. Um, up until Nathan Parkinson attacked a world record, the world record for getting through the entire uh, world from start to finish was uh, 33 minutes and 24 seconds, 33 minutes and 24 seconds. But one day, Nathan Parker sat down, his friend got a video camera over his shoulder, videoed him going through the entire game, and he made it from start all the way to the end, the finish, 
killed the dragon or whatever it ends in the, it happens at the end of the game in six minutes and 28 seconds. Not 33 minutes and 24 seconds, six minutes and 28 seconds. And he did that because he found shortcuts. If you ever remember playing this game or you've seen your kids play this game, you could go down these pipes and you could go and do these certain things. He had figured out what are all of the paths that I need to take, the shortcuts that I need to take to get me where I want to go faster. And when you think about investing, if you're going to make money, you might as well be able to make the money as fast as you can and make as much money as you possibly can. We said this several times in this workshop, but I want to say it again. If you're going to invest and if you're going to place your money at risk, then why not get paid and why not get paid well? You can put your money at risk in the market in a mutual fund in a 401, leave it in a 401k or an IRA or some kind of program and hope that you beat inflation and taxes and fees. Or you can put your money into something that's tied to a growth market and be able to earn double digit returns on that money and do it without lying awake at night wondering, is you know is China going to blow up? Is Japan going to melt down? Is Wall Street going to implode? Where's the next big meltdown or big crisis? You'll be able to know that it's safe and that you've got something that's tied to growth, not tied to people's opinions. How to never lose money again is what I call this. What we did was we figured out, and, and, and since... 2004, I've been on the internet. So some of you have been on my list almost that long, probably. Um, but since 2004, I've been on the internet building companies full-time and advising and consulting companies full-time on how to grow, grow their businesses online. What it really comes down to in growth in any kind of company, as Peter Drucker said, is to create a customer. That's it. To, to have a real business, to grow a real business is to create a customer. Well, for years we did it for ourselves and we taught other people how to do it. And it was about going out, finding where the market is, putting something in front of them that would get them to take some kind of an action, an advertisement, some kind of an inducement or a piece of bait and information, and get them to click through and take some form of action that would put them in what we call a funnel. But the basic idea is it was lead generation. We did it for ourselves for many years. And in 2011, I heard a hedge fund manager on a TV show quoted saying, uh, or excuse me, a private equity fund manager quoted saying, people often think that we only invest in, in traditional assets like stocks and currencies and whatever. But, uh, and even some, you know, okay, real estate, it's kind of a non-traditional, but it's a known asset. He said, but many of us will invest in alternative assets if we believe we can put a dollar in and make more than our dollar back in a certain period of time. We're just looking for ROI. And that night I was out walking the dog and I literally had one of those epiphanies, one of those moments. I literally realized that what we were doing on the internet for ourselves and teaching our clients how to do was investing a dollar, generating a lead bringing that lead in and selling them something and making back more than a dollar that we had spent. So we were creating that positive ROI by advertising on the internet and generating a lead on the internet. And what was interesting is that we weren't making 3% and 5% and 10%. We were doubling and tripling our money and sometimes 5Xing our money on campaigns because the internet is literally the most efficient form of marketing that has ever existed. It's frictionless. People can access and pass information. It's accessible from so many different devices and mediums and modes. And it has the ability to test small and scale big when and only when it works. What that means is that you can buy 50 or $100 worth of advertising on the internet Figure out if you're going to make an ROI, and then when you make an ROI, even if it's a small ROI, begin to put more money into that, that campaign, that advertising, and grow your business or grow your investment, because that's really what it amounts to at the end, grow your investment over time by scaling up and making a bigger and bigger amount of money off of that ROI. But the internet 
does something that, that the stock market and real estate and no one else has been able to do. It gives you predictability. It gives you certainty in an uncertain world. So if you think about stocks, try to convert that into buying Apple. If you knew you like knew you could buy Apple shares for $100 and you knew beyond a shadow of doubt with 100% certainty that when it came time to sell it, you could sell it for 125, 150, 200. How many shares would you buy? All you could find, right? Well, the beauty of digital marketing and what we coined as digital marketing arbitrage was to put money into generating a lead. And only when we realized that those leads were going to be profitable or that traffic investment was going to be profitable, did we scale up. So we got the, the, the beauty of, of being able to make money uh, and, and have predictability in what we do. So we call it digital marketing arbitrage. But really, at the end of the day, it's what the industry calls performance marketing. Now, I want you to think about this. $135 billion being spent every year on online advertising right now. 60% of that is being spent in what we call performance marketing, which is really, at the end of the day, lead generation or helping companies create a customer. This was research done by PricewaterhouseCoopers in a report by IAB for IAB. UK advertisers saw $14 billion in sales generated from affiliate marketing and lead generation in 2013, having dedicated $1 billion in ad spend to those channels. Now, I want to let that soak in and let you think about that for a minute. They invested a billion and they got back $14 billion. And people say, like I have people ask me all the time, they say, JP, how in the world can Harbor City afford to pay double digit returns when everybody else is sucking wind and a lot of people, 70% of investors in the market, stock market lost money last year. How can you afford? Well, here's what I say. If, if we buy a lead for a dollar, we sell it for $2 and we can give you a nickel, that's a great deal for both of us. Think about that in terms of stock. If we could buy stock for $100, sell it for $200, and give you $5 of that money, that'd be a good deal for both of us. But the problem is, is the stock market doesn't have the ability and the predictability to be able to do that, to accomplish that. The essence of this is that digital marketing arbitrage brings companies together. Companies that want to generate leads with, with um, advertisers that are out there, or, uh, 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 people, consumers, that are out there looking for a solution to a problem. So it might be, let's say, a baby boomer who's looking for a particular um, uh, health remedy. They're on the Internet searching. They're talking about it with their friends. Well, guess what? When you click and like pages on Facebook and you uh, talk about stuff on Facebook, Facebook is listening, my friend. And they allow people like us to go in and say, give me all the people that have this particular interest or behavior. And let me put an ad in front of all of those people. So what we do is we identify the market. Identify the group of people that has that pain, that demand. We have companies that have offers or that want to get to that market. And we connect the two and we take a toll booth position and take the money out of the middle. And that's essentially, uh, uh, I think it was Nick for, first summed it up and said, buy it for a dollar, sell it for two dollars, give somebody a nickel. It sounds really simple. But the fact of the matter is, is that digital marketing is the one growth market and opportunity that allows us to be able to make those kind of returns and therefore pass those kinds of returns off to the folks that have participated with us. When I started in 2013, we started very small. We, we actually, in the first seven weeks of starting the fund, we were up 60%. I knew I had something. We spent the first six months getting proof of concept. But for the fact of the matter is, over the last two years in a row, two years in a row, while in 2015, stock market investors, 70% of them lost money, 100% of the people that have worked with us over the last two years have earned double digit returns on their money. So this is some examples of, you know, there's no mystery to this. There's a lead generation or performance marketing or CPA industry out there. Companies list what they will pay for each sale or per lead. Like if you see in here, this says, look at the top, 105 per sale. This is 35 cents a click. This is $1.60 per lead. This is a breakdown of some types of offers that we get access to. It's an example. And there's hundreds and hundreds of these offers. Plus, we have direct clients, people that come to us because we're really good at lead generation. They say, hey, 
Like we had a guy the other day, he spends $50,000 a month on leads. He said, I'll give you 50,000 or more if it's working and we'll give you $10 for every lead that you send us. Sign them up for our program, our, our uh, webinar. So this is free signups that we're signing them up, but we're getting paid for them. So then our goal is to go out, pay less for the traffic than we do for the result and generate the profits in between. So I'll give you some examples so that you can understand the, how we target people. So business owners that want to generate more leads, that's an example of a market. They have all kinds of things they'll buy from software to systems to training and coaching, et cetera. Individual investors who want to take control of their finances, um, they'll buy training. They'll buy access to different types of investment programs, products. They'll attend events like the money show we're going to be at next month. They buy tickets to things like that. Business opportunity seekers, I thought it was interesting, AARP did a survey of their audience and found that 50% of their members plan to start and run a business during retirement. A lot of it's because they're not prepared for retirement, but the fact is, is that they're looking for an opportunity. That's 76 million baby boomers. If you take half of them and slice them in half, so we're 35 million people that very likely will be looking for some kind of a business opportunity. And that's just in the baby boomer crowd, not to mention ages 20 to 50 or 55 or wherever the baby boomers pick up. So we look for markets where we know that we can build what we call a digital lead pipeline or a digital asset. And so we're out there advertising on a day in and day out basis, attracting these people. And then we take offers that we know these people are interested in, put those offers in front of them. And every time those people take an action, fill out a form, could be an application, could be getting more information, could be a download software, all kinds of different things that we send them to, then we get paid in exchange. So as I said, the simple explanation is we buy a lead for a dollar, sell it for $2, give you a nickel and we, we repeat that process four to six times a year, allowing us to pay our investors back a double digit return. Warren Buffett has his rules. Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. When we started this, number one, I put my own money, but I also in December 2013, I told folks, I said, give me a little bit of money, like tiny money, you know, $5,000, $10,000. Let me go prove this concept. Well, now we've proven the concept. Now we've made money. Now over the last two years, we have folks with us that are literally right now getting payments every month for $5,000 a month, $3,500 a month, $2,500 a month, $7,000 a month, um, $12,500 a month. These are people that get a payment from us every single month because they realized I can go put my money at risk in the market. I can put it at risk in real estate. I can become a landlord and have to answer the phone every time somebody's toilet breaks. I can go into all sorts of options and, and, and for investment, or I can put my money into something that's doing nothing but growing, that has a downside risk that's very, very low, because with what we do with digital marketing arbitrage is investing small, proving a concept, proving a campaign, and then scaling up. So we never put huge amounts of money at risk and that has a proven solid track record of growth and success and paying people and being able to generate that kind of return over and over and over again. The, the beauty behind digital marketing arbitrage is we, we definitely live by Warren Buffett's rule. Don't invest a bunch of money. Go out and test small and make money before you try to scale up that campaign. So we've made money while other people have lost money. Nick has sent some of his clients. We've sent some, and this is the, the call to action I want to make to folks. Nick, I want you to come back on, and I want us to talk a little bit about where people might have money stocked away, um, sources of capital that they may be overlooking, that they could take that money and deploy it with us through our program to be able to earn back the kind of money. So I wanna talk about that in just a, a moment. But this is an example, uh, like this is what we call di uh, pure arbitrage. This is where we buy traffic, send people straight over to a lead so we have a click cost, we get paid on the ones that we create an action for, and we generate a return and we roll that money over and over again. This down here, these two uh, sheets for you, are some examples of where we build what we call a digital lead pipeline. For anybody who's been around this business for a while, it's 
It's sort of the equivalent of building a list, but building a list on steroids where we understand people are on that list for a specific desired outcome and they have a set of behaviors that we can tag them on those behaviors and continuously market back opportunities from which we get paid. But I want to talk very briefly because Nick is going to bring up some thoughts and ideas about where you can find money, where you might have money. But I want to put in your mind in motion for you to think about what you need in order to retire. Now, I don't know if you went and invested in something that's earning three or four or five percent. I guess we could figure that out. Uh, you know, if you wanted to, uh, let's just say, let's take that sixty thousand dollars a year in retirement and divided that by 0.05 percent a year, you would. Have, and that's hoping that you could do that. You would have to have a million two in the bank, making consistently guaranteed. 5% above inflation, above fees, above taxes, making consistently. So you'd have to have a million two earning 5% above taxes, fees, and inflation to be able to make $5,000 a month or $60,000 a year. Um, to put this in perspective, to earn that same $5,000 instead of a million two with digital marketing arbitrage, you'd need a little over $330,000 to generate that same $5,000 a month. If you were going to, uh, let's say you wanted to, to make $10,000 a month consistently in retirement, come over here and figure out this is what you need. And some folks say, well, JP, I'm not there. I don't have that. Well, we, we, we work with people on two, two perspectives. One is growth. The other is income. So we have folks that come to us and say, I got the money. I just need the income. So they put the money in and we pay them a regular income. If you're still working and growing your business or working in your job and you're still stocking away money for retirement, then we have a program or a plan for growth. And all you have to do is figure out where do I want to be at that particular point in time. So when you don't take the money out on a monthly basis, we pay you more for that money, which means your money grows and compounds faster. So I want to give you an example. Let's say you're 55 today and you want to retire at age 65, 10 years from now. And let's say that you've got $100,000. You put aside the $100,000 in digital marketing arbitrage in our program. Over the next 10 years, that money will combine and grow and would spit off $15,000 a month in income for you. So you can, and I can come back and show you these if we need to, but you figure out where you want to be. And that's the conversation we're going to have when we get on the phone. Where do you want to be? Where are you starting now? Where's all the different money at in 401ks and all that different kinds of things? What professional help do you need to roll it out? So we're going to hand you over and talk to have a conversation with Nick to see what can you do? What needs to be rolled out? What, what can be moved around? And what can be done in a tax-advantaged way so that you don't get hit with taxes and penalties? And, and that's the mistake so many people make. But we're going to help you figure out where are you at today? Where do you want to be? How many years from now? And where do you want to be? And what's it going to take for us to be able to get there? I guarantee you, just like that little guy playing that Mario game, we found the pipes. We found the shortcuts. There is no faster path to wealth than what we discovered hidden within the largest growth industry of the decade. Digital marketing, online advertising, performance marketing, it's where the future is. It's where we're putting all our money. Uh, it's where my, my family's put money, my friends have put money. Uh, one of the very first investors came on, in fact, the first investor came on board with us. He sent me $5,000 within like 48 hours. He said, start with this. I got a few more, uh, like 10 to 15,000 I'm going to send you over the next couple of weeks. He put a little bit more with me then. Uh, about a year later, he put a little bit more. Last January, he came back and put another $100,000 for us. Uh, excuse me, last December, put another $100,000 with us in December 2014. People are looking for an opportunity. They're looking for growth and they're looking for consistency and for a track record. And we've been doing this. When we get off, I can send you some links if you want to watch some YouTube videos of case studies with real folks that put real money with us that we pay real money to. Um, and that way you can kind of judge this for yourself. But Nick, can you talk just briefly about... Um, the idea behind where people might 
want to look for pockets of opportunity to, um, to, to come up with the money to invest. Yeah, so you touched on one of them. If somebody has IRAs, 401k, SEP simples, anything like that, um, a lot of times uh, they can talk to their HR person or they need to get us with their HR person because if they're at a big company, <clears throat> the HR person will tell them, oh, they can't roll the money out, and then when we talk to them, all of a sudden it becomes available. So one of the things that they can do is they can roll their money out in any kind of plan that they can that they are a part of. For example, if they were at a company, they had a 401k, the company went out of business, fired them, they got terminated or they left, and they've got a couple hundred thousand dollars in a 401k, they had 60 days to roll it into an IRA, and they have that money sitting out there today. They can then take that IRA, roll it over into a program that they control, and then invest. Um, another thing that's out there is, uh, uh, this is another big one, is uh, insurance. A lot of these people have been uh, convinced by insurance people to take hundreds of thousands of dollars and stick it into cash uh, investment grade insurance. Uh, they might be the be your own bank, they might do uh, universal life, whole life, variable universal life, and they have a cash accumulation, a cash value. You can pull up that, pull out that cash value and most of these times up to 90 percent of what's in there and although <clears throat> a lot of times these insurance companies will pay you just like the money's still there, you can pull out that money and then stick it into other investments uh, that you can make another rate of return. So you have uh, your retirement accounts, you have uh, cash value uh, life insurance. Another thing that uh, gets stepped over all the time is uh, a lot of people are paying unnecessary taxes. There's a whole bunch of people out there that are business owners and investors that are paying way more taxes than they should. And they don't realize that CPAs don't get paid to find deductions specifically for them. They're bean counters. That's what they do. They count beans. What we do is we give them more beans to count. They can go in there and let's just say I just I just had a client here just last week that you know we they went to a CPA, they owed something like thirty-five thousand dollars in taxes. They came to us, we found deductions specifically for them, we created a program tailor made to them, we found thirty-five thousand dollars that they wouldn't have to pay the IRS that now they were going to have to cut a check to Uncle Sam, and now they got $35,000 they can invest. And that's before we get into the other things that they're doing. There's a ton of money, excuse me, that's out there in investments and in uh, unnecessary taxes that people are paying that they can take it, keep it, not send it to La La Land, and then reinvest it back into uh, other places that they can make a rate of return. Uh, there's things that people are doing inside of their business, and you know that we're really good at this. There's a lot of spillage. There's a lot of wastage. There's a lot of things that people aren't doing uh, efficiently out there. And when you find those things that are out there, you might even have uh, uh, three employees that are getting paid to do similar things that you can do with one. You start taking that money and reinvesting it back into your business that then reinvests it back into investments. All of a sudden, it turns around not only your business but what you're going to do for your financial future. So there's a bunch of money that's out there. The most important thing is that we sit down and talk with them about things that they can do. Again, we don't care about investments. I don't care what they invest in. I don't care what they invest into. I care about them losing money and that when they do their investment, they're in a tax-favored status that allows them to keep a majority of the ROI. But those are just a few things without breaking down an individual's uh, specific details of their structure and strategies. Excellent. So there's money out there. Folks have money. You you know, maybe you just sold a house or a property or got an inheritance or something. You've got cash that we run across people like that all the time. But if you've if you've got money hidden or stuck in in programs, be sure that you don't just say, oh, well, I could never be a part of that. Um, make sure that we have a conversation. I'm putting up on the screen here for everyone. You can go to www.harborcity.com forward slash freedom. That will redirect over to a simple contact form. Um, there's nothing to buy here. We're not selling products and programs and stuff. Today, we wanted to educate you. We wanted to inform you. And the main thing is we want to empower you. Here at Harbor City Capital, we started this thing small. We started it as an idea that had never been done before, like Buckminster Fuller, a new model. Try something new to, and that makes the old model obsolete. In the last two years and two months, we have done that. Uh, two years and three months almost now. 
We've done that. We have something that works. We have something that is successful. And now we have a grand vision. Our vision, you know, it's one thing to say, hey, I want to go make money. It's one thing to say, hey, I want to build a company. It's one thing to say, I want to sell some products to some people or whatever. But we have a vision, what I call our vision 2020. Our vision 2020 is to empower a thousand cash millionaires who are financially independent by the end of the year 2020. That means that between now and the end of 2020, we're looking for people like you that say, hey, I'm going to hook my wagon to a train that's going somewhere that is also hooked to a market that undisputably is tied to growth and success and profitability. It's the one place that companies are putting their money that, listen, if times are good, and this is something I alluded to earlier, if times are good, companies spend a lot of money on lead generation. But when times are bad, when everybody's stock is going down and, and, and people are worried about the longevity of their company and the analysts are, are running them in the ground and all that, guess what happens? They actually are willing to pay more for the same leads than they did a year or two or three years before because it's more important to their growth and there's fewer of them. So the one beautiful thing about digital marketing arbitrage, about what we've been able to do in tapping into this space, is by converting leads into an asset class, which uh, I was told by one hedge fund manager, he's like, that's freaking brilliant. Like you took lead generation, which is something that people think about but don't really understand, and you made it an asset class, an investment vehicle. So by making it an asset class, we allowed people who don't understand digital marketing will never buy a, a click on the internet, never advertise on the internet to be able to put their capital to work and tap into the growth of this market and be able to make great returns. And as we said, double digit returns while everyone else is sucking wind, while 70% of the stock market investors are losing money last year, while literally you have a 95% chance of a market correction in the first nine months of this year, get your money out of the market. Get you, Take control and you say, well, it's in a 401k, it's in a mutual fund. Guess what, guys? It's tied to the market. Get control of your money. When we have a conversation, we'll just have a, nobody's going to be strong arming and trying to talk you into something. We're going to have a very legitimate conversation about where are you? Where do you want to go? What assets and opportunities do you have to work with? And then if it's necessary to be able to pull some of that money from the market, we're going to immediately open up a three-way conversation and I'm going to get Nick involved and let him and his experts be able to go through and say, okay, here's what has to happen. Boom, 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 boom. So can I uh, just can I just say one thing, JP? Uh, one of the things that I saw in 08, you know, we have tens of thousands of clients, and this is one thing that I can tell you that I personally saw, is that you know uh, a business owner, uh, a, a major corporation, a Fortune 500, a Nasdaq company, a Dow company, what happens is they go out there and they say our estimated earnings for this year is one billion dollars, okay, and they. They uh, everything's going the way that they planned, and they're going out there and they're setting up their marketing, they're hiring staff, uh, they're doing everything that they have to do to hit those projections. Because if they don't hit those projections, their stock drops, the shareholders lose money, uh, the owners of corporations and companies lose money, uh, the the workers get terminated, right? Uh, they start cutting and chopping, and that means jobs. So everybody's working towards this one plan of hitting this number. And they have quarterly estimates, uh, quarterly uh, returns, uh, call your Qs, and they have your Ks, your yearly uh, returns, and, and how close they get to profitability. Uh, if they beat it, or if they tie it, or if they lose, so goes the stock. Now, if you are, say, an insurance company, and let's just say that you are pooling from a million people that would buy uh, life insurance, and so... You know, they come to somebody like you and they say, look, uh, we uh, are, this is our budget and we're willing to pay $20 for somebody that's going to complete an advertising for whole life or universal life or one of these other insurance products. And, you know, you say, okay, well, the lead is now $20 a lead. And they contract with you. They said, okay, we'll take 1,000 leads at $20 uh, a, a pop, right? But now the market turns. And it goes from a million people being in the market to buy life insurance to 100,000 people. Now, they still have to hit their numbers. And so they're going to spend more money on marketing just to 
be able to break even with the estimate of where their money was, what their business was supposed to do that year. So now a lead that was $20 a lead isn't $20 a lead. Now it's $100 a lead or $150 a lead. Now that's on major corporations. Even small businesses after 08, I saw my business owners spending more money and paying more money for leads and spending more money on advertising just to get back close to where they were before, just to keep their way of life, just to keep uh, the way things were before and keep their employees and keep things, their, their current client customer base and keep uh, competitors out of their market. They had to spend that much more money just to be able to be back to where they were before. So in a good time, in a bad time, it does great, right? It does, it does good. And in a good time, it does great. So when things are going good, people spend money because they want to make more and more money. But in a bad time, it's really good because they have to spend that much more money and allocate that much more resources just to sustain the business. So you're talking about an investment that ultimately is recession-proof. And although I would never want the economy to go down, the facts are it will happen, and it does happen. You need to be in an investment that when the market turns, although you're sad for everybody around you and you're seeing how it affects everybody that you know and everybody you love and your neighbors, that you aren't hit in the market, that you are making money and you are profiting in a down economy just as well as you are profiting in an up economy. Absolutely. Well, guys, um, yeah, recession proof, big statement. Um, harborcity.com forward slash freedom, www.harborcity.com forward slash freedom. I actually put the link in the chat. Um, we're going to try to get a replay up on this very quickly. Um, we want people to be able to take action before something drastic and dramatic happens and you end up losing your wealth. So fill out the form. Let's get on a call. Uh, let's find out where you want to go. Let's find out what it's going to take to get there. Take care. Thanks, Nick. Fortune DNA. Appreciate you being over here and uh, jumping on the call with us today all the way from Vegas. And uh, guys, we'll see you on another training call very, very soon. Take care. Uh, for, be, be sure to join me in Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, that sort of thing. Look me up. Be glad to continue the conversation there and uh, fill out the form and we'll hop on a call very quickly. Take care. Bye-bye.